الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد احبت في الله continuing on in our study of some of the issues in nikah we reached the second hadith in umdah tahkam uh, and this is the hadith of Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and we'll, then we'll talk about some of the issues from the hadith and some of the some of the some of the issues that stem from this hadith related to nikah some very important issues like polygamy and uh, and the ahkam of nikah an Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and a nafran min ashabi nabi min ashabi nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sa'alu azwaj nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an amalihi fi sir faqal ba'dhum la atzawaj an-nisa wa qala ba'dhum la aakul al-lahm wa qala ba'dhum la anamu ala firash فبلغ ذلك النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم حمد الله واثنى عليه وقال ما بال اقوام قالوا كذا لكني اصلي وانام واصوم وافطر واتزوج النساء فمن رغب عن سنتي فليس مني in this hadith of the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم the hadith of anas ibn malik رضي الله تعالى عنه he said that a person from amongst the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, asked, uh, min, min ashaba nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they asked the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the actions that he did in private. So some of them, meaning this, these companions, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, they said, we will not marry women. And some of them said, we won't eat meat. And some of them said, we will not sleep upon uh, a bed. And then this came to the Prophet wasallam. So he began, he praised Allah by saying, Alhamdulillah, wa athna alayhi, and praised him. And then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what about a people that says such and such and such and such? When I, I pray and I, uh, and I sleep and I fast and I break my fast and I marry women. So whoever desires other than my sunnah, then they are not from me. In this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that was uh, reported in Bukhari and Muslim. In this hadith, some of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they asked about issues that only the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, radiyallahu ta'ala anhum, radiyallahu ta'ala anhunna, that they would know about. And they, some of them said, we will only, uh, we won't marry women. And some said, we won't eat uh, meat. So they were actually uh, trying to be vegetarians. And some of them said, we will not sleep upon a bed. You know, trying to give themselves hardship and reserve themselves for ibadah. And when this came to the Prophet Sallallahu Wasallam, as was his his nature or his, uh, his, his custom or habit is he praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be, he began by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said what about a people who say such and such and such and such and one of the benefits of this hadith that the ulama point out is that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't mention those companions specifically meaning he didn't call them out and say what about so and so he said this and so and so said this and so and so made a mistake on this but rather he left it general letting us know that sometimes there's a time and place for speaking about the mistakes of an individual when they uh make mistakes specifically if there's a need for it 
But then also from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we'll get into this in other uh, lessons, is that also to keep it general, just to refute the mistake. So it's all, not always necessary to mention a specific individual and call them out for their mistakes, especially if they're people of uh, fadl, you know, they're, they're respected ulama, respected students of knowledge or what have you from Ahlul Sunnah, then it's not always necessary to refute them personally and call them out, but instead maintaining respect, but refuting the mistake and not letting it go by. So the Prophet Sallallahu he did this with his companions, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, those who fell into this mistake. And he left it very general. So what about a people who say such and such and such and such? He said, however, I, I fast, I, I pray, and I sleep. So he does the night prayer, he does the tahajid, and then he sleeps. And he fasts, and he breaks his fast. And he marries women. And then he said, whoever desires other than my sunnah, then they are not from me. So we'll just mention a, a benefit from that statement because that statement lets us know that we're ordered to follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that this is a very strong reminder and a, uh, a warning, a stern warning that we have to follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his minhaj, in his understanding, and to avoid bid'ah. As in the hadith of uh, Aisha, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, when she said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man ahdata fi amrina hadha ma laysa minhu fuurad. Whoever innovates in this affair of ours will have it rejected. Letting us know, and in another narration, Man amila amilin laysa alayhi amruna fuurad. And whoever innovates in this affair of ours will have it rejected. Letting us know that bid'ah, there's no khair fi. There's no khair, there's no good in innovating in the religion and trying to change the principles or the worship in the religion, and may Allah forgive us for any mistakes and any bid'ah that we fall into, and our brothers and sisters in Islam, and guide us all, ameen. Getting back to the point of this hadith and nikah, one of the important masail that comes from this hadith is it shows us, and we've already spoken about the, uh, the um, legislation regarding nikah and that it's a legislative thing and that it is something that the um, the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and the consensus of the scholars are in agreement that Islam uh, that nikah or marriage is mashroor that it is legislated that it is from Islam that Islam rejects asceticism where people do not marry you know monasticism Islam rejects monasticism. Islam encourages us to marry. And with regards, there's some beautiful Messiah, and I'm reading from a very fantastic uh, explanation and co compilation called Misk al Khitam Sharh Umdat al Ahkam. It is an explanation, and it was from Dar al Hadith Damaj, and the author was Abi Abdullah uh, Zaid ibn Hassan. Ibn Salih al-Wasabi al-Umri. And it's a fantastic piece of research. And he brings up some beautiful issues. And there are some actually fantastic works that came out of the Maj uh, related to fiqh. And this piece of work, one of the masail he brought up is the hukm nikah liman qadra alayhi wa khashiya ala nafsi. So this is the ruling in the statements of the fuqaha with regards to the one who has the ability to marry and they are fearful on their self. So some people, they have money. They have the ability to marry and they are just either close to falling into zina and there are, unfortunately, we know many of our brothers and sisters who make zina regularly, who date and do everything and they have the ability but they're just saying, oh, I'm waiting for the right one or they have whatever excuses they have. What is the ruling regard the one who has the ability and but and they're fearful of falling into zina. One of the statements of the ulama, the the ulama basically have two uh, views with regards to this. 
the one view, and we're not going to get into their monocasha or else it'll take very long, their debate about it and all their evidence, but we're just going to present these issues and what is the most correct opinion in accordance with some of our scholars and with the adilla. Uh, so the first group of ulama say that it's an obligation for this person to get marry, married, you know, because they have the wealth, you know, they have the physical prowess, obviously, and they are fearful of falling into zina. So this person, it's an obligation to get married. And we spoke about this before. And this is one of the narrations of Imam Ahmed. Uh, you know, one of the statements of Imam Ahmed. And it is also a statement of uh, the opinion of Abi Awana al-Asfaraini. Asfara, <laughs> Uh, and he is one of the Shafi'i scholars. And also it is the statement of a Vahiriya, like uh, uh, Dawood, a Vahiri, and uh, Sahib al Mahalla uh, ibn Hazm. So they say that if a person has the ability to have uh, sexual relations and they have the uh, the wealth and they're fearful of their self, then it's an obligation upon them to, uh, to, to marry in this situation. And the one who doesn't have the ability, according to them, uh, so they're saying that it's an obligation upon every individual who falls into this, who is able to have sexual relations, meaning that they have the ability to, and they find the person who they're able to marry or they have uh, right hands possessions, then they should. They should, fought, they should do one of them, either marry or the right hand's possessions. And if they're unable to, meaning unable to marry, they can't find, meaning they, they have the ability, they have the, the prowess and they have the money and they're fearful of zina, but they cannot find someone suitable to marry, so to speak, then they uh, should fast. And this is in accordance with the, the, uh, the hadith of the Prophet wasallam. And this was a statement from a group of the Salaf. And Ibn Qudama also, he said, uh, this is the statement in general of the fuqaha, of, of most of the, most of the fuqaha. And Imam Qurtubi also has some very important uh, benefits regarding this. And he, one of the things he mentioned is that the person who's able to, and they're fearful, uh, Allah harming themselves or their religion, or so forth, uh, and the only way they, they can protect themselves is by marriage, and there's no difference. They must, it's a, there, he said there's no difference uh, of opinion with regards to the obligation to marry. So that's the first uh, opinion regarding this issue. The second call, uh, some of the ulama have this call, and this is actually the call of the statement or opinion of most of the fuqaha, which is interesting. So this is the second opinion, and they say that a person who is who has the sexual prowess and the financial ability, and they're fearful of falling into zina, that it's not an obligation, but that it's actually recommended for them. And that's the statement of uh, the most of the uh, fuqaha. And Imam Noawi mentions uh, this. And that's a, some of the issue. But as we mentioned earlier, the first issue, the first opinion is is most correct. So we don't want to get too tall because I want to cover some other issues. Uh, that the first opinion is correct. That's what we need to know. And that if a person has the ability, the physical prowess, and the financial ability, and they're fearful of committing zina, then they must marriage, it beco marry, it becomes an obligation. Uh, the second mess'al I want to talk about, which comes from this hadith that the, uh, the sheikh mentioned, he said, حُكُمْ زُوَاجْ لِمَنْ قَدْرَ عَلَيْهِ وَلَمْ يُخَفْ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ So this is related to the ruling, what did the fuqaha say, fuqaha say about the one 
who has the ability to marry, but they're not scared of zina, meaning that they are they don't have a lot of excess shahwa. They, shahwa. they can focus, you know, they focus on their studies, they can work, and it's not a big deal for them to not be married. So the first uh, opinion of the scholars is that it's, it's recommended for them to get married. So it's not an obligation, but it's recommended. It's better. And this is the statement of Abu Hanifa, Imam Abu Hanifa, uh, Rahmatullah Alayhi, and some of the Shafi'i scholars, Rahimahumullah Jami'an, and some of the Maliki scholars, Rahimahumullah, and uh, this is also the from the apparent... Uh, what seems to be apparent from the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in and in accordance with their uh, with their actions the actions of the Sahaba so this is the asl of the Salaf is that it's, it's recommended for the person who has the ability but they're not fearful of falling into zina meaning they're not close to falling into zina they can kind of control themselves they can, can, they can control themselves the second opinion regarding this is that some of the scholars say it's better So they say that it's better if this person doesn't have those excessive desires and even though they have the means to marry that it's better for them to focus on their worship. And this is the, uh, one of the statements of uh, Imam Shafi'i or this is a statement of Imam Shafi'i and some of his uh, those on his madhab. And the Sheikh mentions that the most correct is the first com- is the first opinion, and that is clear because that was uh, the what seems apparent from the Sahaba and what they and what they practiced. So that is the strongest of the view, meaning it's better for the person to marry if they have the ability to, even if they are not fearful of falling into zina. So it is mustahab, not an obligation. The third issue I want to talk about, Habatifillah, is the person who has the ability for marriage, but they do not have the means. And unfortunately, we are, can really relate to this in the West, especially in America, in a lot of communities, and probably France, and probably the UK, and other places where there's a lot of brothers who don't have the means but they definitely have the desires and they need to marry. And the, the statement of the ulama, what do they say about this, the fuqaha? The first uh, view, it, it comes down to two views, is they say that it is disliked for this person to marry. يَقْرَهُ لَهُ الزُّوَاجْ وَهُوَ مَأْمُورْ بِسَوْمْ لِدَفَى تُقَانْ وَهُوَ قَوْلْ أَشَافِعِيَ Okay, this first view is the view of the Shafi'iyah. And they say that, uh, that it is disliked for this person to marry. Because they are, as we mentioned in the first hadith, that they are ordered to fast. The, the, uh, whoever is unable to marry, then they should fast. Because fasting... Uh, reduces the desires. And that's according to the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu So that is their hujjah, is that, uh, that the person should fast and it's dislike for them to marry because they don't have the means to marry. The second view is that it's permissible, if they don't have the means, it's permissible for them to marry. Uh, and this is the statement, and that it's not disliked. And this is the statement of Imam Ahmed. So it's not that it's better, not that it's uh, mustahab, but it's permissible. It's permissible. So it's not disliked, it's not haram, but it, it's permissible. You Jews. This is a statement of Imam Ahmed. And he said, Yan bagi li rajal in yatazawaj. He said it is uh, basically a necessity for a man. He, he should marry. Uh, so if he has the ability to provide, then he should provide and spend. And if he does not, uh, then he should be patient. And they use as evidence the statement, because the Prophet ﷺ used to wake up sometimes and not, there would be, he would have nothing. And he would go to bed and he would have nothing. 
and that the Prophet ﷺ uh, allowed for a married or married off a man who didn't have anything except an iron ring, uh, or who didn't have anything, he didn't even have anything, even the iron ring. And so he didn't have anything except his izar, except his waist garment, and he didn't even have a top sheet. So the Prophet ﷺ allowed for him to marry. So this is why this opinion is stronger, that even if a person does not have the abil- have the financial ability to marry uh and he is very you know he feels he needs to marry it is permissible for him to marry so it's not haram and it's not necessarily disliked but it is permissible for him to marry because he may not be able to control himself or what have you and this also and even regardless of that this is what the adilla shows us and that uh, one of the things the Sheikh mentioned, he said, but that with regards to this view, is that also it's a um, it's a condition that the man makes this known to the woman. So she should be aware of this and accepting of this. Otherwise and, and be able to be patient. So, for example, how does we practice this? That means if a man, a brother, as we know, brothers who lived in the masjid and brothers, whatever, they don't have jobs or they have menial jobs or what have you. They don't really have the financial means, but they really want to get married. It is permissible for them to marry. However, they must make that known to the woman that they don't have the means, they don't have any money, and can you be patient with that situation? So that needs to be, that's a condition, the sheikh says, and he said, Allah knows best, that they should make this known. So they shouldn't hide this from a woman, because we know in the first hadith we mentioned uh, the statements of the ulama regarding this. So the dilla shows us that, you know, we should make this known, and that uh, the, the dilla here seems to be stronger, that yes, he can marry, but... Uh, meaning that it's permissible, not necessarily better, and not necessarily disliked. The last uh, issue I want to deal with from this hadith is regarding the one, maybe we'll save this to the next sitting because it is getting longer and I want to keep the sitting short, so we'll also continue on with a couple of other issues from this hadith. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.